This episode is brought to you by Astropad Studio. Turn your iPad and Apple Pencil into a screen-based graphics tablet for your Mac. Visit astropad.com and start your 30-day free trial of Astropad Studio today. A lot of illustrators wonder why their final illustrations never look as good as they hoped. They like their sketches, but once they try to make it all come together in the final, something goes wrong. Ultimately, a lot of beginning illustrators find it hard to make finished artwork that actually looks finished. So why is it so hard to transform a sketch into a legitimate looking finished illustration? The answer is more straightforward than you might think. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what I think's going on here. But first, hello, my name's Tom Froze. I'm an illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare where I've helped over 100,000 students unlock the world of commercial illustration. Welcome to the channel and welcome to episode 100. That's right, this is the 100th episode that I've made on this channel. I started this channel way back in early 2018 after I noticed maybe four or five people subscribing to my then very fledgling and kind of random channel. Hey, it's me. Um, I've noticed a few people have started following me, like just a, like a real small few, like maybe five people in the last month or something. So a tiny trickle of people. But I think it's important to acknowledge that people are actually following me on YouTube a little bit, which makes me wonder if maybe I should be making content. We've come a long way, baby. We're now at almost 10,000 subscribers, and we've even started to build up a community of illustration learners over on Patreon and on Discord. And while well, I'm so grateful for all of you, especially those of you who've stuck around since the beginning, and even more especially those who've reached out over the years to let me know how these videos are helping you through your own journey into illustration. I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you. My goal is to continue to grow this channel, not so much in numbers, but in quality. I wanna continue getting better at making content that matters to you. You know, I really struggled with coming up with today's episode, as my Patreon supporters will know, but through all the struggling to get here, I realized what my most important job is here on the channel. It's to create content that's truly valuable to you, you know, content that's worthy of your time and attention. So again, thank you for watching today and please always feel free to let me know how I'm doing. The easiest way as always is by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe even sharing this episode with friends you think might appreciate it. Okay, so let's get on with the content. So what's my answer? Why don't the finals look as good as the sketch? What's up with those finals? In just two words, it's a jumbled performance. If you can discern a good musical performance from a bad one, you know what I'm talking about. Imagine any song you like, and then imagine it being played with the wrong instruments or maybe being played with all the same instrument. I mean, could you imagine a Bach concerto performed entirely by saxophones? Or imagine the song you have in your head uh, being played with all the right instruments, but no one in the orchestra knows how to play their instrument. Or maybe they know how to play them, but they play all the notes at the same volume without any dynamics. Maybe they just play full blast. There are many possibilities for how a song can be played in the wrong way, but it ultimately all comes down to one thing, skill. No matter how good the score is, if it's performed without skill, the music will be unbearable. It won't sound how the composer intended it. It's the same thing with an illustration. The sketch is like the score or the sheet music, and the final illustration is the performance. The sketch is the intention of the artwork in schematic or theoretical form, the final is the way it actually plays out in reality. The reason we might find that our sketches look better than our finals is that we haven't figured out how to play the scores of our sketches using the instruments of our final illustration tools. The sketch looks good because it's rough and because we don't expect it to do anything more than just give us a notion of what the final art could be. We don't expect our sketches to look skilled or complete. On the other hand, the final falls flat because we expect more from it. We need it to look skillfully created and we need it to look complete. Everything needs to come together in a way that sits right with us. The performance must be perfect. 
The mistake that beginners make is in thinking that because they use professional illustration tools, their illustration will automatically look professional. But just because we use, say, a digital illustration tool like Procreate, it doesn't mean it's gonna look more finished than our sketch. Our digital tools might help us make cleaner artwork, but that doesn't mean it will be good. If anything, the sterility and precision of digital tools will only make our lack of skill more obvious. Digital illustrations are far less forgiving than the simpler tools we use to sketch with. Of course, it's not the digital tools that are to blame. The solution wouldn't be, for instance, to just use physical media instead. The problem is in how we use the tools. Very often, we treat the sketch as something to merely trace over using our digital tools, or we treat it as though it were a sort of coloring page. If we just add outlines and colors in Procreate, maybe our work will look like a legitimate finished illustration, or so the thinking goes. This is the number one mistake I see beginners make in their illustrations. Once we decide that we're ready to turn our sketch into a more final piece, we break out our Photoshop or Procreate or whatever, and then we place the sketch on the bottom layer and then proceed to add brush strokes, colors, shapes, lines, and so on over top. The problem that I see is that how these elements are added feels kind of out of the box or defaulty. What I mean is that even though the brushes or other tools available to us in our illustration apps could be used in ways that work, they end up being used indiscriminately or without an understanding of how they truly work. For instance, just because you have a Mary Blair gouache brush set from Kyle Webster, it doesn't mean you'll suddenly be able to make digital art that looks like it was painted by Mary Blair. You have to start with a sense of what a Mary Blair painting looks like and how gouache uniquely plays a role in creating her images in her style. In fact, I recently saw a cheeky tweet by Kyle that said, my brushes don't come with skills attached. I couldn't have put it better myself. And in there is that one thing I said it all comes down to, skill. You might have great ideas and be able to draw them out effectively in your sketches, but you also need to have specific skills used to create a finished illustration. First, you need to know what qualities you're aiming for in your finished style. Next, you need to know which tools will have the qualities you need, and you need to have specific techniques for bringing these qualities out of them. The problem for beginners is understandably very frustrating. How can you know what your finished style tools and techniques even are? Out of the thousands of possibilities, out of the infinite brush sets available, or out of all the different illustration software, out of all the gazillions of colors available, how do you know where to start? I understand that this is not an easy challenge to overcome. Well, I can't tell you exactly how to find your tools, which would be kind of like telling you how to find your style, I would encourage you to simply start with the basics. I've talked about this many times in my other videos and classes, so I'll keep it short here. Keep it simple. Start with the most basic tools that you do know how to use now. Don't try to ride a motorcycle until you've learned how to ride a bike. Then once you have an idea of the style you like working in and the kinds of tools and techniques you need to achieve it, you can begin to develop those specific tools and techniques with more purpose. It also helps to know the differences between a sketch and a final beyond the obvious fact that one is rough and the other is refined. I mean, what are the goals for the sketching process and the finalization process respectively? What is the purpose of each one? So first let's look at the sketching stage. The sketch is a plan for the final. We use the sketch to plan the concept, content, and composition. I call these the three C's. We draw in rough form whatever our idea is, often iteratively, until we have a clear, albeit rough, picture of what our final artwork will look like in the end. But there's more to sketching than just drawing a picture to trace over or color in later on. And this is why we need to already know what our style, tools, and techniques are in our final illustration style, even as we work out our sketches. Our sketches should map out how the tools and techniques of our final style will come together. In our sketches, we anticipate which tools and techniques we'll want or need to use where. 
The sketch is just like a musical score. While it has no sound or soul in itself, the score maps out how the song should be performed. When writing a score, the composer needs to know what instrument the score is meant for. And more than that, they should probably know what the song's ultimate purpose is. Is it a song on an album of other songs? Is it a soundtrack? Is it a classical performance? Is it a jingle in a commercial? In the sketch, the illustrator is already thinking about the techniques they'll be using to flesh it out later on. But that's not all. They'll also be thinking about the intentions of the final piece, namely how it will be used and where it will go and what reproduction techniques might be used along the way. The key word here is intention. In order for a sketch to come together in a more final illustration, there has to be a specific intention for that final illustration. If an illustration is not for anything in particular, there can be no particular way to know whether it's working or not. Illustration must always aim at a specific purpose. We can only know if it's finished if it's working toward that purpose. So all of this is to say, the role of the sketching process is to map out an intention for the finished piece. Like the score of a song, it creates a structure for the performance, but it is not the performance itself. Now let's look at the role of the final or the final illustration. The final is the realization of the sketch. It's the fulfillment of the intention, both in the technical sense and in the functional sense. Ultimately, a finished illustration is the image that will find its home in some larger system, be that an advertisement, a site-specific mural, or maybe an image that pops up in someone's Instagram feed. Returning to our musical analogy, the final is the performance of what was only expressed as a score or notes in the sketches. The final is where all the theoretical comes together, how it all actually plays out. Just like it matters how well a musician knows their instrument when performing a song, it matters how skilled an illustrator is when finalizing their sketch. When we set out to finalize our illustrations, we have all these particular elements to work with. Brushes, pens, pencils, paper, or canvas, layers, opacity, colors, vector pass, masks, and even lettering. We have blending modes and smudge tools and many other things at our disposal. When using any of these tools, it's not just a matter of tracing over or coloring in over our sketches, but in using the qualities of your chosen tools with skill and good judgment. So I don't wanna come here just to tell you that if you're a beginner, you have no skills, so deal with it. I don't think that would be fair. I don't think that would be kind. I wanna offer you something that can help you know what you can do right now, even as you're just starting and maybe something that can help you start getting better in your work today. So if you're at the very beginning or in a place where you feel like you struggle to make your finished illustrations look complete, I want you to remember this one principle. Simple scores for simple songs. Don't create songs that exceed your abilities to perform them. There are actually musicians who are wonderful songwriters who are actually quite mediocre instrumentalists. Apparently, according to guitar experts, Beck, Nirvana, and even Johnny Cash were not super skilled or talented with their instruments in the technical sense, but all of these became famous for their music. Perhaps this is because they wrote songs that they could actually play with their given skill set. So I said I want you to take this one thing. Simple scores for simple songs. What do I mean by that? Sketch in such a way that you can play things out gracefully in the final. You may not be able to create work that resembles the work of your heroes, but you might be able to create something good given the skills that you have. For me, I've always wanted to be able to create digital art that feels more like the gouache and watercolor illustrations of Miroslav Sashek. But no matter how hard I try, without having gone to get more instruction in actually painting and drawing in these media types, it remains impossible for me. I can't seem to make work that looks like Miroslav Sashek's. So instead I've had to make do with techniques that I do know how to use and do my best with them. I have a few techniques and digital brushes that I know my way around and I try to make the most of them. Furthermore, I've learned how to plan for using these when I'm building up my sketches. Whereas maybe Sashek is writing scores for a small orchestra and able to play them out beautifully and skillfully with all the different instruments at his disposal, I've had to stick to a three-piece band, you know, guitar, bass, and drums, and just make do. 
When writing your metaphorical songs, consider that each track, each voice or instrument that you add increases its complexity. You have to know how each instrument complements the others. What does each one add to the composition? How does each change the vibe of the song? What are the particular qualities of each instrument? And how are these best used? Tracing over a sketch, using a bunch of illustration tools without understanding is like taking a bunch of instruments and indiscriminately trying to make them all play your song, each without the proper skill, dynamics or control, all in unison without considering the unique voice of each one. Digital illustration tools or even traditional media need to be understood in order to be played properly. Skill and craft is required to make a final illustration come together in a way that feels complete and whole. For each new brush or tool that you introduce in your finished illustration, consider the unique properties that tool has and how you can more intentionally use those qualities to build up your image. As I'm talking about this idea of performance and skilled use of instruments, I feel like I'm overlooking an important thing, which is the final recording and ultimate purpose and context for the work. Whereas in music, we often think about live performances. In our commercial art, we're pretty much always performing on tape. We're recording our performances to be replayed in one or more places that extend into time and sometimes multiply over various formats. How a song is recorded depends on how it is meant to be used. Will it be a single? Will it be for the radio? Will it be on an album? Is it in a commercial? Will it be a soundtrack? I've already touched on this when I was talking about intention. The same goes for your illustration. What is its final intention? Is it to complement an article in a magazine? Will it be a fun graphic for a t-shirt? Are you making illustrations for a picture book? The intention here is about both use and reproduction method. When you're building up your artwork, you should anticipate how it will be reproduced, copied or otherwise distributed. How does the art look when it's printed? What about when it's viewed on a smartphone? How does how you build up your artwork digitally affect how it looks or is reproduced in its final form? Without getting into the weeds, what I'm trying to say is that part of our skill in creating work that looks finished is understanding what finished truly looks like. Not just in our file, on our screen, but out there in the wild, wherever it ends up. To create a final illustration means to understand its final intended use. What is the artwork meant to do? Where will it go? And what are the physical or digital ways in which the work will be recreated and represented in its final forms? You will never know if your artwork is working unless you know where and how it needs to work in reality. You'll never know if it's complete unless you know what bigger picture the artwork is meant to complete. Where does your illustration go? What qualities does it need to work there? When you're considering how to truly finish a final illustration, you should ask, what are you going for in your chosen final media? What are the unique properties of each element and how are you transcending them? What is the special thing, the magic, that happens when everything comes together with all the different tools you've chosen to use? Don't just trace your sketches in a more digital way. Don't just fill them in like a coloring book. Perform them. Perform the art that you planned out in the sketches in the same way that a musician performs a song from the notes on a staff. The score is just the structure. It's the plan. It's the idea. There's no sound until it gets played out. And how this all plays out is about the skill of the performer. The soul is not in the sketch. It's in the performance of the final art. When you're wondering how your final illustrations can look more final, if you want your artwork to exceed the expectations set out in the sketch, just understand that sketches are only the beginning. The final is not just a restatement of what you did in the sketch, it's a performance, an orchestration of your final tools and techniques coming together according to your intention and skills. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. My name's Tom Froze. You can learn more about how I transform sketches into finals in my class, Drawing Toward Illustration. Visit tomfroze.com slash teaching to find this and all my other Skillshare classes. Also coming out in just a few days is my new class, The Six Stages of Commercial Illustration. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. I know it's gonna help anyone who wants to know more about the process of leading clients through their art.
Follow me on Instagram and subscribe here on the channel to be notified when the six stages drops on Skillshare. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.